What's up everybody, welcome to Podcast Now, I'm Alex, and in this video I want to talk about my favorite or the best slabs in Deathloop, talk about how you get them and go from there. So there's five in all, and I'm going to pick three that I constantly use. Now I kind of mess with two of them, I keep one just always, and I kind of swap the other two around depending on the situation. We have the Nexus slab, the Shift slab, and the Ether slab, okay? These are, in my opinion, the best three. Three. Shift is the one that I keep no matter what, and then I swap the other two. So Shift is the teleportation. I'm really just talking about the base power, to be honest with you, especially early on in the game, first several, and I do mean several hours of the game. You're probably not going to get many upgrades anyway, so you're just kind of talking about the base of them all. But Shift is my personal favorite. Honestly, it feels like the game was almost designed to have this on at all times, or like where you should just have this as a thing your character can do no matter what where you don't have to earn it but it's my favorite it lets you get a lot of different places you can kind of cheat go around uh, different areas that you know is, is not going to happen in terms of, of you just kind of jumping up to them right so it gets you out of sticky situations if you're if you're in a group of enemies uh, again there's a lot of different pathways where you can skip certain segments of the map or what you should be doing or whatever there's a lot of ways around that using shift now let me say this, and this is, applies to all of them, but we'll talk about also specifics as well. These powers are gained by either killing the visionary that has them, which we'll talk about, or killing Juliana. Now, in my opinion, killing Juliana is the e depending on who's playing as her, is the easiest way of doing this. Um, you know, you could be playing a couple rounds or, you know, kind of maps, but going through the day, and Juliana could come multiple times. You know, I, I would say within the first three, four hours of the game, I killed her about five or six times. And, and, and again, she will always drop a power. Very easy way. In fact, I got all five of these, all five slabs that the game has. I got all five just by killing her. And then I didn't, I think it was, some of them were before I got the power to infuse, and then I had to kill the visionary to get them back, because I kind of lost them, you know, when, when you restart. So that's the situation. I personally uh, think killing Juliana makes the most sense. Depending on who's playing as her, I have faced some pretty good ones that'll, like, snipe me from afar. I don't even see where they're coming from. Then there's others where I kind of trap them, or I figure a way out to get an easy kill on them, and it, it is pretty darn easy, but it depends on the situation. Killing the visionaries is, obviously, the easiest one even if you uh because you can turn off the fact that juliana can invade your mode you can turn that off so the shift slab is from charlie it's a relatively straightforward thing if you stay relatively quiet throughout the arcade it's it's not the hardest thing in the world uh to get from him then we move on to the nexus slab which again depending on how you play that's another thing i guess to to, to discuss but depending on how you play the nexus slab i think could be extremely useful so this is one where again base power not necessarily talking about upgrades is you link a group of enemies now you kind of drop almost like an invisible bomb on them so they need to be close together like you can't look at enemies that are like the entire distance of the map away and say okay i'm gonna link you to you they have to literally at some point be standing right next to each other the good news is a lot of enemies in this game do have uh i guess traces or tracks that they kind of walk on where they do at some point group up sometimes in a group of two sometimes you can get like three or four of them in a nice easy group and then they'll spread out again and that's fine as long as you get them when they're in that group and basically like I said what happens to one happens to all so you link them and you headshot one all of them die very very useful specifically for someone like me who tries to be stealthy does it a little bit and then at some point always ends up messing it up and then I literally have to fight like 30 enemies this is a very good ability to use even early on even if you are a stealthy person trying to eliminate eliminate them one at a time quietly this is a way of, of again shortening that one this one comes from Harriet uh, she's kind of difficult at least for me I did not have that much fun taking her out um, but it's not the worst thing in the world I'm also just not the greatest player um, of mankind but she's in the, uh, the the plane hanger not that bad but that's where she will be uh, to get that power and then the ether slab again I, I swap ether and uh, Nexus this comes from Igor okay and this allows you to be temporarily invisible now you are temporarily 
temporarily invisible when you die. When you die and you kind of reverse time and then you come back, you're invisible for a couple seconds. This one is a little bit longer than that. And one more time, this is just the base power, no upgrades. Uh, but this is a, a good one for getting out of sticky situations um, as well. Again, it really depends on how you play. If you never really feel a use for becoming invisible, maybe this one is not your cup of tea. And the other two are solid, like Havoc. I think I have a lot of fun with. That's the one where you deal more damage and you take less damage. That's a very offensive first kind of skill. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I am an offensive kind of player just generally, but I do like to not die. So being becoming invisible where nobody can see you is also a, a really good one. So again, this is this one I think works in a lot of different situations just in general. I don't really think I need to explain becoming invisible to you. Um, and again, this is Igor. He's got like a base. When I personally did it, I thought the game was broken and maybe the game was broken for me because I literally killed next to no enemies. I invaded his little open compound. There wasn't a single enemy there and including him and then he randomly appeared teleported a couple times and I killed him immediately so I don't know if my game was broken but it was the easiest of all of the visionaries that I've personally killed so far uh, was Igor very easy got the ability and was like sweet again I guess pro tip or not even a pro tip but just something you do specifically I would say for these three abilities as soon as you get them and you exit you infuse them right so you keep them around long term if you don't infuse them you're gonna you're not gonna have them anymore right you'll you'll restart with nothing the next day so those are are my top three again the other two are definitely solid although the one where you can literally like telekinesis wise a lot of people have been complaining about it including myself I don't really I think that is the most unnecessary and the one that just doesn't really feel like it belongs or you can't really use it well it doesn't really it's not a strong one I would say that would easily be the most useless of the five but the other four definitely are something that depends on your play style so let me know what you guys think in the comments below make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel I can definitely do more death loop videos if you want me to all of my social media is also in the description through links my twitter my second channel and also our patreon and youtube memberships thank you for watching and i hope to see you all on the next video